20 to 12 is your final as the Giants get a massive win when it comes to the playoff picture. Now eight, five and one and a full game and a half clear technically of these Washington Commanders. If you take that head to head into effect, which we will when it comes down to it in the end, it's Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley and a tip of the cap to Kayvon Thibodeau getting the job done in primetime Jones previously 0 and 9 in a primetime slot gets his first win under the bright lights. All right, let's dive in with the two-time Super Bowl champ, Bryant McFadden, and in studio with our guy, Lee J. Doosable, 10 years in this league. You've seen it all, dudes, and this was something special. Games decided in final moments. It was very much what we thought the game would be, but, I mean, big takeaway headline coming off of this one is what? The, the Giants, the fortitude to finish this game. Divisional foe, you needed, you know, to win this game to kind of solidify your spot in that playoff race and be a game up on the Washington Commanders. And then the four minute drill, right? For the, mm. the Giants to go out there with six minutes and something on the clock after they're getting a big turnover in the red zone. And for Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones to run about four minutes off the clock, Graham Gano go out there and kick a field goal to put them up by eight. That was massive. That's what winning teams do. Being able to put somebody away, but even then, Tay, uh, Taylor Heineke was able to drive his team down the field, right? They had an opportunity. You said it, Moose. They scored a touchdown, but Scary Terry was not on the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation gets pushed back. Darnay Holmes, was it API? We don't know. I like the no call. I like for the players to decide who wins the game, not the refs. But you have to give a kudos, right, to Brian Dable for having this team ready to play after just playing this team two weeks ago and getting manhandled last week versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, what about Dean Pease and his defense? I mean, they were outstanding. They put a touchdown on the scoreboard, only allowed 12 points from the commanders. Uh, they suffocated the commanders on third down opportunities. I think they only converted one third down for the entire ball game. So that was outstanding play. And you look at some of the key contributors that we have grown accustomed to seeing in the lineup for the Giants, those, those guys were not there tonight. But yet and still, the backups came and played big time roles for them. In a night where Daniel Jones in the offense wasn't really impactful in scoring opportunities, only scored 13 points, the defense led by Thibodeau was outstanding. Uh, you know, you don't find the Cowboys rooting for the Giants all that often, but the Cowboys do secure a spot in the playoffs with this result. More on that in a little bit here, but you mentioned Kayvon Thibodeau, 12 total tackles, three for a loss, a sack, and a touchdown. Game-breaker type stuff, dudes, yeah. that you're looking for on a guy that you spend an early first-round pick on. Did this feel like the coming out party for Kayvon Thibodeau for you? It did, and he kind of talked to the media about that this week, right? He said he shows up when the, the bright lights are on, and he showed up and showed up bright. It wasn't just the plays he was making, Moose. It was the effort. That's what the, that's what really I really honed in on. It was the mm -hmm. effort from Kayvon Thibodeau. Like, even a play where uh, Taylor Heineke on the bootleg gets a first down, it was Thibodeau who was supposed to have containment there. He ran down the field like 25 yards to chase him. Most guys would have given up on that play. There's multiple times on screen plays where he's down the field. We saw the sack fumble for a touchdown. It was the effort that Kayvon Thibodeau came out here. He really set the tone. And he met Taylor Heineke at the goal line to force yes. that short scenario there that ends up going awry. BMAC, Kayvon Thibodeau, a couple words here. Fantastic night from the young star. You don't usually see, quote-unquote, a defensive lineman. I understand he's an edge rusher, but let's keep it real. He's a defensive lineman. Provide double-digit tackles, right? 12 tackles, mm. nine solo, a sack, three TFLs, quarterback hit, forced fumble, a touchdown. Unbelievable night. And if he can continue not to play this way week in and week out, but just be a spark for their defense, you know, this is something they will need because offensively, they have some issues. They have some concerns. They can give you a little bit of production, but don't expect for that group to be an explosive-like group. They will have to make things happen on the defensive side. So when you look at what they have already, a healthy Leonard Williams in the lineup, adding Kayvon Thibodeau, if he can use this as a momentum booster to continue to be consistent, man, I like this defense. Because one thing about this defense, guys, they might not be the most talented group on the football field, but they play with a lot of energy. It's all well and good. And uh, it is reason for celebration on this given night. And I'm not one to break up a party, but you got to look forward. And this is a team that just won a football game with 160 yards through the air, 288 total yards, really leaning on the defense, especially getting points from that defense, BMAC. Can the New York Giants continue to win this way as we come down the stretch and you start facing some teams that are really going to give you trouble if you can't move the ball and put points on the board? No, sir. No, sir. 
When you get into a situation where you're playing good on good, your offense has to be better. Because, yeah, I like their defense, but if you're playing against an offense that's more consistent than what they played tonight with better quarterback play, you're not going to go far. So they have to find a way to make things happen on the defensive side. Saquon Barkley in that four-minute drill, he really showed up. He he tried to close the ball game for them, wasn't, un, wasn't able to do so. But outside of Saquon Barkley, somebody else has to step up. Your quarterback got to find a way to step up. But for him to be productive, somebody got to be able to create separation in the passing games as well. So luckily enough for them, they played against an offense that really don't scare you. They played against an offense that's still trying to find out who they are in, in regards to their identity, and their defense was able to shut them down. But getting ready to get into the playoffs, and when you talk about playing good on good, your offense at some point in time, they got to come to the party. Dudes, when you take a look at the night that was here, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau really uh, steps up and, and takes the moment uh, late in the game at Saquon. But we can't go without offering a few words here to Daniel Jones, who did what was asked of him in this game. Right. I know he threw a lot of guys to safety. It's not a big play offense. What did you make of the night out of Jones here and putting his team in the best position possible to win? Yeah, efficient with the football, and that's what Daniel Jones has been this whole year. He hasn't turned the ball over like he's done in the past. And then we talked about it right in that first half, that last drive. Pivotal third down pickup, a big fourth down pickup to Richie James. Not really threatening the ball down the field. Usually, Darius Slayton is their guy that they take shots down the field. But the intermediate game, he was very efficient throwing the ball. And then that four-minute drill that BMAC just talked about, Picked up a huge first down on a zone read. We talked about this earlier, Moose. So many quarterbacks just give that ball to the running back, and, they, you know, the defense doesn't even respect them keeping the ball. Well, he keeps the ball, gets on the edge, and gets the first down. I talked about that in the pregame show. Mm -hmm. Him using his legs sometimes to really keep the chains moving, and he did that at the most pivotal time for this Giants team. Sunday's action, everybody take a deep breath, is in the books. We do have one more game to play, and that's a game of pick your path. I want to take a look at these remaining schedules, guys, and really see who could make some noise here. And I know offense has got to be better. Uh, New York does have the game in hand. But if I'm offering you the option, BMAC, I'm going to go your way first here, of the Vikings, the Colts, and the Eagles, or the Niners, the Browns, and the Cowboys. Now, Washington does have two at home. They are technically a game and a half with a tiebreaker behind New York. Which one of these routes are you taking in a vacuum? Throw out the records. Which one of these schedules do you want to play? Uh, give me the Giants schedule, and here's why. You have a difficult ball game next week, Christmas Eve, at the Vikings. But outside of that, the Colts, they're a bad team. And then by the time you play, the, play against the Eagles, who knows who you may see lining up for the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. And you transition to Washington, I think they had the Cowboys, uh, Cleveland. I can't remember the third team. 49 But it's uh, – yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, enough said. Uh -huh. enough, enough said. So, yeah, give me the Giants. Give me the Giants. Basically, one team you need to really worry about. I don't want to be disrespectful. You have to worry about the Colts. But based on what we've seen throughout this season, the Colts, mm -hmm. they're a very, very bad, bad team. And by the time you play against the Eagles, heck, I might be the starting quarterback. For <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, B-Mac, I think it's a toss-up because yeah. if you look at the Cowboys, they're not going to catch the Eagles at the number one spot. They may just as well be resting everybody week 18. You just talked about it, Moose, because of this commander's loss. They're already in the dance, right? So we don't know what Cowboys team is going to – you might see Cooper Rush. I mean, you might get more uh, Tony Pollard, which is still kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, the 49ers and Vikings, I'm not going to say that is a wash because I think 49ers are heads and heels above the, the Vikings. But I think those are a loss for both of those teams. So – Honestly, yes, the Giants schedule seems a little bit easier because it's the Colts compared to, I believe, the, the Cleveland Browns, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. So I would take the Colts before I played the Cleveland Browns because Deshaun Watson, you don't know if he gets hot in that game. Um, you know, these last couple games are just for him to get that rust off that he's had for the last two years. Then, you know, that could be a tough matchup if you're the Washington Commanders playing the Cleveland Browns. I would say beware a Week 18 Gardner Minshew playing for a job somewhere else. True. It's just something to keep an eye on. Uh, depending where those Eagles fly to here down the stretch. Let's take a look at the playoff picture because this one had massive implications in the NFC. And with the win, the Giants, they jumped the Commanders, now sit on that six line at 8-5-1. and one. The Commanders, 7-6-1, and one. and not just that one game off. It is technically a game and a half with a tiebreaker, as we said, belonging to the Giants. The Cowboys, they punch a ticket here and likely to stay in the wild card when you're looking at the top of that division with the Eagles. It's starting to galvanize, gentlemen. Uh, Lige, I'll go your way first here. You take a look at this, and just jumping off the board at you is what? You got a Lions team there who's alive and well. The Seahawks heading the wrong direction. The Bucks struggling 6-8, and eight, still a game clear of 
uh, the Panthers, the Saints, and the Falcons all at five and nine. Where do your eyes go when you look at the NFC playoff picture? The Detroit Lions. You talked about it, Moose. I mean, I believe winners of what six of seven games mm -hmm. um, beat my Jets, unfortunately tonight. <laughs> but if you look at their schedule, it looks like they could potentially run the, uh, the table. Now, again, you respect everybody in the NFL because you can get beat any Monday, any Saturday, any Sunday. But compared to the Giants and what the Commanders have to face, they play lesser opponents than the Detroit Lions, and they're playing at a higher level right now. Now, again, they've played some games on the road. I believe they still have the Chicago Bears on the road, and we saw them give a dog fight right to the Philadelphia Eagles yep. today so you have to take everybody seriously but the way that Detroit is trending right now they're one of the hottest teams in the NFL I look at that spot I think they're going to solidify themselves and slide into that six or seven mm. spot by the end of the year I agree with you I think they're playing inspired football finally their defense you know they're playing better football more consistent on all three levels I'm really loving what I'm seeing from Jared Goff uh, the, the the offensive line unit for them has been remarkable as well. So I think they will find a way to get in the playoffs. So what I'm looking at is six and seven. Who will open up the doors for the Lions? Will it be the Giants who had a huge win tonight or will it be the Commanders? Because both teams, they don't have any room for error. And it's safe to say if you look at the Lions and granted their schedule, it would be considered to be easier than the Giants. If Detroit take care of what they're doing, and to, winning today, I feel like this was going to be an opportunity for whoever won the Lions-Jets game to have an inside track to get to the playoffs. I think they will. So I'm looking at to see what happens with uh, six and seven. You know, who will take care of their business to keep the Lions out? Who will may have a, a miss up or two to allow the Lions to get in? We were sitting here two months ago talking about Dan Campbell's job. Now we're talking about a potential coach of the year yeah. leading his team to the playoffs of all places. Uh, let's pivot to the AFC here because very much what the Lions are doing, uh, you got a Jaguars team right now coming off a emotional win and only a game back in their division. So that's the first and second overall picks in last year's draft both within a game of playoff seeding. Unbelievable stuff that we're seeing here down the stretch of the season. Biggest result on Sunday, dudes, as you take a look at some of the stuff that occurred, even Saturday, I mean, we could bring the Bills into the equation, the Chiefs here on Sunday. Biggest result in Week 15 in the AFC was what? It's a tie between the Bills beating the Miami Dolphins and then the, the Ravens losing to the Browns mm. because it upseated them in the NFC North. And Lamar Jackson, we don't know the health yep. concerns with him. Will he be back Christmas Eve to play or not? That's a big concern if you're the Baltimore Ravens. Plus, you have the Bengals Week 18 in Cincinnati. But I think the Bills winning that divisional game versus the Miami Dolphins was colossal for them. We talked about this uh, yesterday, BMAC. We think the Bills need the number one seed to make a serious run in the playoffs. We saw the home field advantage. I mean, their fans are throwing snowballs at refs, <laughs> camera guys, the opposing team. That's the type of fan base they have up there at Orchard Park in Buffalo. I played for that fan base for a year, so they're a rabid fan base. I think the Bills getting that win versus Miami was big. I think today, seeing what happened in Duval, right, Jacksonville fighting from behind, I think they were down 17 points at one point in time against a real good team in the Dallas Cowboys, winning that ball game, and then, then watching the Tennessee Titans take one on the chin against the Chargers. Even though the Tennessee Titans, they have the number one spot in the division, the AFC South, they don't have any room for error. And right now, when you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, how they're playing football, Trevor Lawrence is doing some pretty good things defensively, a very, very opportunistic group. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Jacksonville more so than the Tennessee Titans. So I feel like this would, was the Titans' division to lose. I think that potentially could become a re reality based on what we've seen and looking at what both teams have going down the stretch. Mac, dudes, if this is what Sundays are like with this trio, everybody same place <laughs> week 16. It was a blast, and we appreciate you both breaking it down. Yes, sir. And don't forget, Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. Scan the QR code on your screen to book a car from a community of local hosts across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and coming soon to Australia.